starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
been by St. John, plus Apostle, uh, the inspirational spirit, we find a theme whose orientation is the saints. We as God's people, we believe in the saints. And we define the word saint in a very unique and special way. According to the way it is defined by Dr. Martin Luther in the Small Catechism, according to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. And we as God's people define the word saint this way. Any of the baptized and the faithful, any who have faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. All the faithful of the past, all the faithful of the present, all those who are yet to be, who are not yet born, all those who have been called home before us to a place called heaven, who are now part of the company of heaven. All of those are saints. And we as God's holy people, the saints, we are a diverse group where there is perfect and total equality. We come from a number of nations, a number of tribes, a number of people with a number of different languages. And according to God's wisdom, he has made each of us unique and distinct, and a one of a kinder. Some of us saints are tall. Some are short, like me. Some saints are skinny. Some saints, like me, are wide. Some saints have blue eyes. Some saints have brown eyes. Some saints have green eyes. Some saints have white skin. Some have black skin, some have brown skin, some have red skin, some have yellow skin, but they are all saints. The baptized, the faithful, those who make up the Holy Christian Church, the body of Christ, the saints. As we just confessed our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess the words of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. It's all one piece. It's all true now and even for all of eternity. And so we believe not only in the saints, but we also believe in the communion of saints. Communion means to be joined together, to be connected, to be united, to be one. And the one thing above all other things that unites us as God's holy people is a common faith in Jesus, our Jesus, as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. We are the saints. This brings us to the first lesson for today. In the first lesson for today, we find St. John, the Blessed Apostle, sharing with us his vision of revelation, of paradise, of the Holy Christian Church as she goes through time. And as the Holy Christian Church is the body of Christ, also the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Not from man's point of view, but from God's point of view, from all of eternity. All the past, 
the palm branch is a symbol of peace. We as God's people who have faith in Jesus as Lord and say Redeemer are united together because we exist under God's peace that goes beyond all human understanding. We are now at peace with God. We are now at peace with ourselves. We are now at peace with our neighbor. Now and even for all of eternity. And that white robe, that white robe is the baptismal robe of Christ's righteousness that all of us received when you and I were baptized. That's the attire, and that's what you and I are going to wear in paradise for all eternity. The white that is a robe of Christ's righteousness. That is the required wedding garment to partake of the ongoing wedding feast, Holy Communion in Paradise for all of eternity. And that is the white robe that after the robe of Christ's righteousness that you and I wear as we make our pilgrimage from the baptismal font to the promised land. And it's white because it is Christ's righteousness. Every time you sin, every time I sin, every time a sin is committed against us, it puts this big black mark on that white robe. So by the time you and I get to the end of our day, that white robe of Christ's righteousness is filled with the blackness of sin. And only one way to get rid of the blackness of sin. You've got to be washed by the blood of the Lamb. So, we go back to the words of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. All one peace, now and forever. And so our God has given to us this awesome gift and blessing of holy communion. And every time you and I partake of holy communion, we are drenched, we are grounded in the blood of the Lamb. We are purified. We are cleansed of all the sins committed against us and all the sins that we've committed by thought and word and deed. Gone forever, removed from you and me as far as the east is from the west, even for all eternity. No more, because they all died with the Lamb of God, Christ, when he died upon the cross on Good Friday. And when we partake of Holy Communion, we who are sinful partake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who is holy and pure. We die in the death of Christ. We are resurrected in the resurrection of Christ. We become a new creation. Something different than we were before. Before we were loaded with sin. Our sins and the sins committed against us. Now we've been washed, and cleansed, and purified by the Lamb of God, a new creation. And as we partake of Holy Communion, that's where you and I find the communion of saints. One of the gifts and blessings our God gives to us through the sacrament of Holy Communion is that we are then connected with those who we have loved the best and known the best, who have been called home before us, to Christ, the Eternal One, being fully God and fully man, the connecting point between heaven and earth. So what that means for you and me is this. You and I don't have to wait until we die to be with those we have known the best and loved the best, who have been called home before us. Grandma or grandpa, mom or dad, husband or wife, son or daughter, brother or sister, best friend. Every time you and I partake of the Blessed Sacrament of Holy Communion, they are in communion with us and we are in communion.
Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You and I, we are the saints. We are the saints because we have faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. St. Paul, the blessed apostle, reminds us also that the one thing that unites us with all the faithful who are on this side of paradise is that we are sinners. We are sinners and saints at the same time. Every one of us has sinful flesh. Every one of us has the old Adam. Every one of us sins by thought and by word by deed each day. Each day we think thoughts we shouldn't think, say things we shouldn't say, do things we shouldn't do, go to places we shouldn't go. Every one of us. Every one of us is a sinner. God only wants sinners.
those things unconditionally for who we are and what we are, even for all of eternity. And is that not what love actually is? To know another person so well, you know their strengths and their weaknesses, their positives and their negatives, their goods and their bads. And in spite of all that, loving them for who they are and what they are. That is the love the Good Shepherd has for you and for me and all the saints. It's one of the things that unites us as the saints. So too, as our Good Shepherd, he does more than just unconditional love us. He promises to remain by our side toughest, and the hardest, and the worst moments, and darkest moments of our life, to drive a tear from our eye. We are the ones who live with the great tribulation. We are the ones who live with the end times and the final days. You can ask any one of the saints, ask any one of the faithful, ask any one of the baptized. And they will tell you. We all know what suffering and pain is. We've all cried a river of tears. And any one of us can cry a river of tears. We live in the bottom of the world. Here we are having to deal with COVID-19. It brings its own brand of isolationism and people being lonely. It's a bummer being lonely. shed those tears. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, our one initial love. He promises to come to you and me and dry your tear from our eye and say, hey, do not fear. Do not be afraid. I am here, and I am here for you in your worst hour, your toughest hour, the toughest hour of your and he comforts us with his words. By the way, he was the same to never be afraid. I have promised you as your good shepherd. I will never forsake you or forget you or abandon you. I am with you even until the end of the age. And I am here for you right now by your side. And you're one of the saints. You belong to the body of Christ. You belong to the family of God. There's a multitude of brothers and sisters in Christ who are here for you. So they go phone and call them. Skype them. Email them. Message them. Tell them that you are alone and be amazed how your brother or sister in Christ will eke out a little bit of time to be with you. To talk to you. To listen you, to laugh with you, to cry with you, to pray with you. And as he does that, the good shepherd wipes every tear from our eye. As you live in the fallen, broken world with the great tribulation, we live in amongst the lowest things that get broken. Some people cry and weep because of broken things, broken hearts, broken dreams, broken promises, broken confidences, broken lives. For those times that we become those people and cry those tears for those reasons, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ promises to come to you be with us in our hardest hour, our darkest hour, our darkest time, and wipe every tear from our eye. And comfort us, reminding us that he is the good shepherd. He is the reconciler. He is the prince of peace. He is the one who puts the broken things back together. He is the one who 
binds up the broken heart. He is the one who replaces the old dreams with the new dreams. With hope. He replaces hopelessness with hope. And helpless with help. He is the good shepherd of the divine exchange. He replaces darkness with light. Death.
and sickness and health. And my grant must strength to accept your will for their temporal and eternal lives. Visit them, their afflictions, and empower them with your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Yeah, okay. Holy Father, that Brian and Deb Rathie, Byron and Deb Ellery, I give all glory and thanks to you for the blessings of their marriage and of the continued years I be a time of ever my love for each other and for you. Remind them that you are the source of all their blessings, and continue to promise husbands and wives that marriage and honorable state sanctified by you. Lord, in your mercy. Here, our prayer. All powerful creator, we pray you blessing the earth to make it fruitful, bring forth in abundance whatever was needed to the support of our lives. <coughs> Prosper we implore you, the work of farmers. And grant us appropriate weather of sunshine and moisture. We both have a seed time and a gathering of fruit, fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Here. In your hands, O Lord, we bid all we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, as your kingdom, we just pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, 